Okay, good morning everyone. It, uh, as you can see, I went ahead and mounted my inverter and I've got my, uh, my 10 ohm uh, resistor right here. So when I connect it to my system, there won't be any sparks. Um, and I did a little cleaning up and I, you know, last night I decided to call it a night, get a fresh start in the morning. So, uh, so yeah, inverter's mounted, but I'm having an issue. I have, this, I have an issue with how to wire this positive cable. My negative cable is going to be easy. It's just going to go right from the negative to the negative bus bar. No problem. Cable, six inches. This guy, it will be here, but I don't want it to be going all the way across on top of my negatives um, to get to my positive. I just don't like the idea of having a positive cable going across all this negative side. So I think what I want to have is I want to have this fuse. This fuse, I mean, it's a 150 amp fuse. And with a 3000 watt inverter, which I don't plan on pushing to 3000 at all. Um, you know, I'm, 2000 might be the max that I'm, I'm planning on pushing it. 150 amp fuse, you can get about uh, 3600 watts through this fuse. So I believe this fuse will be good for what I, what I want to use it for. Uh, please leave a leave a message in the comments if you think that I should switch out this fuse because in my mind if I don't push this past 2000 even with a surge I don't I don't think a I don't think a, a split second 4000 watt surge will pop this 150 amp fuse but please let me know if I'm wrong Okay, so my idea is instead of having this wire going all the way across, just like this, is drilling a hole here and having the, the positive cable go through and then having this mounted here and having, having the, the positive cable go through here, come out here and plug in and then just having a positive cable a short run from here to here. I think that's going to work. So let's go ahead and uh, drill a couple holes in here and get this positive cable run. All right, I got my first hole drilled. So now I'm going to grab the cable and see if this will run through here just fine. much better if you angle it drill it drill it at an angle a little bit so that way the wire isn't so have such such an angle to turn I think that would be good next thing is uh, I'm gonna mount mount the fuse and now let's see if we can run the cable lug and we'll have a lug here but lug is going to go here so that'd be good and then another lug here okay put some crimps on this wire Man, I was cut. I was cut them way too long. Now I gotta cut some of this copper off. Man, hopefully that doesn't screw up 
my measurement. If so, I just wasted all of this, this foot of copper. Yeah, darn it. What do I do? Should I just put heat shrink over it? I mean, there's that much. I guess I'll be all right. If I put heat shrink over that, what do you think? Uh, leave a comment in the comment section if you think that I shouldn't have just used heat shrink over this. Yeah, see, it's only a quarter inch. I'm just going to trim it. I'm sure it'll still fit. As long as I don't do the other side like that. There we go. Much better. Look at that. Oh, the crimp. Yesterday I was using the uh, 25 millimeter crimping bits, but then I read the manual and it said for a two gauge wire I should be using the 35 millimeter. So I'm going to use the 35 millimeter and hopefully I get a good crimp. This is not easy to do with only two hands. Let's get this so it holds it. Okay. Okay. Let's hold it in place. Let's go ahead and put our wire in. Make sure no threads are sticking out. Threads are sticking out. Jeez, oh, come on. No, it's not. See, that's crap. You should not be using 35 millimeter. I say use the 25 millimeter. See, look at that. I can just push it right back on there, even though it was fully crimped. Ugh, okay. Twenty-five millimeters. Right. See, that's a crap. It should be. Yeah, that's not coming off. Okay. Now to cut this side. Beautiful. Marking it. Marking it before you cut is such a better idea. shrink these up. It's a slight angle at it so because that way this one is going to go sideways and this one's going to go like that. So it's going and then it's going to go in back behind it like that. So it'd be it's going to be perfect. It's a tiny bit shorter than I want it to be, but I think it'll be okay. put the lugs on here I'll be back Tighten all this down. Okay. Great, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and do our negative and then we can turn on the inverter. Okay, last cable is done. Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and cover that 
bus bar. All right, and now all we gotta do is make sure to take our resistor. So what you wanna do, 12 volt system, you'll get a small spark. With a 24 volt system, you'll get a medium spark if you connect your positive to your positive on your inverter because it, it, it uh, powers up the transistors in there. It powers up something, so you get a big spark. But if you use a resistor uh, and you connect the positive to the positive, it will charge it up. You can connect it with the, with the resistor, put the cable on there without getting a big spark. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Take our resistor. Boom. Just like that. Tighten it down. Let's see if this thing powers on, huh? Beautiful. Look at that. Turned on. Absolutely no spark. Cover up the positive bus bar. Right, and that is it. Let's go ahead and plug in our loads. All right, Let's see if see if everything turned back on. Oh, batteries are charging. Batteries are charging. Lights work. All right, everything everything is good. I think that's it. So that is the complete setup of now my 24 volt system. What I have, let me just run through it. I have uh, 1600 watts of solar panels running into two breakers, two uh, 32 amp breakers, which in turn go to two uh, MPPT charge controllers. And then I have my batteries going into two uh, 40 amp circuit breakers right here and here. And then from there, goes to my bus bars. Bus bars go to the batteries. Uh, bus bar also goes to now my 24 volt to 12 volt step down, which powers my 12 volt block and my uh, Raspberry Pi, which I can unplug and plug in through my USB port right here. Also, now it's all fused up to my inverter, two 12 volt, 300 amp hour Chins batteries in series. So that gives me 24 volts. Hooked to my 24 volt inverter, which uh, is working perfectly now. So thank you very much for uh, following me in this journey from this upgrade from 12 volt to 24 volt. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments and I will, I will answer them as, as soon as I can. Uh, please leave a like if you like this video, if you learned anything from it, or if you want me to do more videos about this, uh, this solar setup. And also, please uh, subscribe to the channel. That way uh, you can be notified of any, any other new uh, content that I create. Thank you so much for, uh, again, thank you so much for uh, following me in this journey. And uh, everyone take care. Bye-bye.